Take another match. <laughs> just start it when it when it's on. Just wait. It's wicked. It's really clever how everything got put together. Mm. <laughs> So, for this session, we are going to be exploring a completely different reality, sort of. Something that I'm not very familiar with. I don't know if any of you are in here, but Jeremy, would you like to enlighten us? Mm. Jessica, please. <laughs> um, this is a parent's guide to a K-pop loving child. Mm. <coughs> Number one, if you're homophobic, you and your child are probably going to have a bad time. Number two, when your child shows you a picture of their favourite singer, don't instantly assume it's a girl. It probably isn't. Number three, when your child starts talking about Lucifer, they aren't worshipping the devil. Number four, it doesn't matter whether they can or cannot understand what they're singing. Don't bother arguing. Number five, a man in a dress is classed as sexy. And no, no matter what you say, nothing can change that. Number six, as well as K-pop, they're probably also watching K-dramas and K-reality TV shows, as well as learning Korean. And number seven, although the obsession seems slightly unhealthy at times, it's secret to keeping them alive and away from drugs and sex. And K-pop isn't just a phase, and they won't grow out of it. Thank you, Jessica. I prefer my own internet reality. Maybe it's because I don't rely on school as my main social life provider, or the fact that I never really feel accepted, assured there. That school just doesn't do it for me. Students backstab each other each and every chance they have, and they say, you can trust them. But how can you when they start bitching about their closest friends to you? You can't trust anyone, really. Over the summer holidays, people complain about missing school. You miss the people, you idiots. And then there's me, wishing I could stay here forever with unlimited internet access. Because that's what does it for me, internet. It's what gives me access to my world, <coughs> the world that I love. In this world, I can finally be myself, not holding back on the fact that I'm madly in love with a bunch of Korean guys who are <laughs> way too old for me. In this world, I can finally be myself. I'm accepted. We are like family, screaming, crying, falling in love again and again. We make, we make friendships. And if we lose them, it's only because their internet connection has died, not an argument. YouTube, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, they all have these mini worlds. And then there's the K-pop part. Screaming, crying, falling, love again and again, sharing photos, stories and rumours, locking ourselves away in our rooms for hours and end, and not even getting lonely. As I rush home, School, from school to the safety of my laptop that awaits me with pre open tabs of my favourite websites. Before I know, it's 10 pm, the time for me to face the real world all over again. In my slow, dull, dusty maths class, my Russian teacher drones on about how to find the value of X. I don't really care. I sneak a peek at my phone. And it tells me that it's 8 p.m. in Seoul, Korea. They're probably heading home in their exclusive van after a hard days of work. Or maybe they're going to some high-end nightclub. Or they're probably having a conversation about music, maybe. What tracks they've recently discovered and what artists they like. Or maybe there's an awkward silence in the van as they've had a major argument. Or maybe the making conversation isn't on the first thing on their minds right now. Maybe they're too tired. 
maybe they're doing all these things whilst I'm sitting here grinning like an idiot and my heart pumping as if there's hope. Ten things about me and K-pop. One. My boyfriend pretends that I'm just a fan. Who says long distance relationships won't work out? My future husband is all the way in South Korea and I love the death out of him. Okay, even if it's one way relationship. Once he said, I love my fans. I'm a fan, so. Two. Peace in my heart dies a little when I think about all the women in the world, then think about all the female K poppers that want some kind of relationship with my offer. And then I think of the probability of me meeting them, and then I think, oh, fuck off, maths. Three, sometimes I think the lyrics are written just for me. They're not, mm -hmm. I can pretend, right? Mm -hmm. Four, mm -hmm. Opera Gangnam Style is a very bad representation of K-pop. Mm -hmm. Five, Koreans are very clever at marketing their artists. Mm -hmm. Entertainment companies trade their artists anything from one to eight years before they actually mm -hmm. debut. Mm -hmm. Six. I think it would be amazing if I was a K-pop trainee mm -hmm. and then become a K-pop star. I would love my fans so much, create a fake Twitter, fake Facebook and fake everything, and join fan groups and spaz with them. Mm -hmm. And they would never know. <coughs> oh. It's never gonna happen. I haven't got not pretty enough, and I haven't got that spark that it's saying the companies are looking for. Mm. Seven. My TV is so neglected, I haven't turned it on for ages. There's like dust mites back gathering on it. I only watch K dramas and other Korean based shows. My library's also neglected. I only read fanfics. Eight. You can ask me their names, and I could tell you. You can ask me their birthdays and I will tell you. I will quote their quotes and tell you who sings which part, the date of their debut and how old they are now. I could explain why he has extensions and why there's a half-naked man on my wall, but I can't explain to you why I scream in the confine, why I scream into my pillow in the confines of my room every night. Nine. Every day, I think, dream about them. All these months, I've never had a dream about them. Why not? So, does anybody have any questions about what K-pop is? What it's like to live a life as sort of a child, a teenager, going through school with this obsession and having your reality based mm. all around this? Do you have any questions that you would like to ask about? Do you share your obsession? Mm. Um, I used to, but I kind of like learned that not everyone's suited for this kind of obsession. Mm. But yeah, so I kind of stopped sharing. Mm. Before I, uh, like I found some friends finally to discuss it with, mm. so now I'm fine. But before I was just so lonely, like where are we? Where are everyone? So I couldn't really talk to anyone about it. But now I can. And you created like a shrine to your obsession. My room. And how? Pretty much. What does it look like? Oh, I've got pictures. <laughs> uh, there. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's printouts of yeah collections of. And is it mainly pictures? Yeah, pictures of of the K-pop stars. He's an actor, but. He's a Korean actor, <laughs> they're all, but they're all pictures of Korean pop stars. Mm. Mm. My, my aim is to cover all four sides of my room, so this is only two mm. for now. I'm going to cover that. And about objects, are there any like this T-shirt? I've got this T-shirt. I've got um, albums <laughs> that I ordered from Korea. Can we have a look at them later mm. after the show? Just mm. talk to me. But yeah. <laughs> Okay, is there any more questions, guys? No? Oh, yeah? Good. Do you like kimchi? Huh? Do you like kimchi? Do you write? Do you like kimchi? Um, I have never tried it. 
Mm. But I would like to one day. Mm. Although if it's spicy, I won't <laughs> hate spice. Mm. Okay, any more? Mm. No, that's mm. fine. Um, okay, so I've got a few questions to ask you guys. Um, they're just really more of a show of hands so that they can get the mood going in the room and sort of understand a few things about your guys and your, your sort of obsessions and things like that. Um, so it's just a show of hands, you don't have to share anything if you feel uncomfortable. Um, okay, so the first question, has anybody here got a guilty pleasure of their own? No, only one person in the whole room. Or two? No, no terrible TV shows, no cheap chocolate, no. So, has anybody got a passionate hobby then? Yeah? that do have a guilty pleasure or passionate hobby, how much would you say that you indulge that? Would it be monthly? Or daily. Or daily? Daily. Okay, nice. Um, so, thinking about your guilty pleasure or your hobby or whatever, what would you say that it gives you? Would it be escape? Or connection? Presence. Presence. Okay, nice. I like it. Um, so, what do you say about guilty pleasure would be dangerous to yourself or others? No, yes. A little, you do it there. Um, how about illegal? Any illegal guilty pleasures? Yes, I'm sure they're all keeping those quiet. <laughs> um, would you say that any of your hobbies or I put around perceived as sort of childish or maybe weak minded? Yeah, me too. Some of my hobbies are terrible, like TV shows, like Made in Chelsea. Yeah. And people are like, what? I'm not seeing that. Adventure time. Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. My friends. Um, so you don't have to answer this one. It might be uncomfortable, well, I'm not sure. But how would you say that it fits in with your own sense of identity? Mine's very different. Like, it doesn't fit my identity at all. I mean. So yours is sort of like a, a sort of secret world, yeah. kind of, yeah. I think mine makes mine. I think mine helps make mine. It's, but it's not a guilty pleasure. I don't feel guilty about it. Yeah. It's a pleasure. But I think it's, I've got no guilt at all about any kind of pleasure. That's myself. good. You shouldn't. But, um, yeah. but I think it makes my reality. It makes me. Um, what would you... Okay. What is other people's sense of your identity and how important is that? to your own sense of identity. Does that make sense? So how other people think of you, how does that, does that matter to you? Mm. Anybody, that can be anybody in this room that's asked me about guilty pleasure. Mm. Doesn't affect, you've already said that you're not guilty about it. Yeah. So okay. like, <laughs> a lot of people really sometimes judge me by like, they, when they think of K-pop, I think they think of like Asians and mm. like traditional kind of dresses, singing, and it's not like that. It's basically <laughs> pop music. But just sung in Korean. Yeah, so people are sort of ill informed to yeah. Them, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. the gay stuff as well. <laughs> um, okay, so sort of thinking about that kind of leads us on to our second sort of tribal task, really, guys. Um, it's basically, if you could create your own virtual reality, what, what would yours be? And I want you to think about that now because I understand that's quite a, quite a big ask. So you need to create your own world in your head. Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to introduce Jess, who also has a, a very, very important piece to share with us. So Jess, would you like to do um, This one is quite different to K-pop. It's mm. about a game. Um, mm. It first started when I went downstairs. I saw my older brother, Peter, on the computer. He was so focused in what he was doing, he didn't even realise I was standing right next to him. I had to ask him what game he was playing. It looked pretty cool to me. Nothing like all the other online games I'd catch him on. I wanted to join, to get involved, to feel as boring free as he did, even just for a little while. Me, 
I didn't like games, mm. computer games that is. It just wasn't my thing. I was the only one in the house mm. you'd catch reading a book in bed because I was eight. And eight year olds are too young to be playing massively multiplayer online role playing games, which usually involves talking or communicating with strangers. But I didn't care because I loved it. People would approach me and ask me to be their friend. It felt good. It didn't happen in real life. In the real world that I lived in, people would point at you and laugh. But in this world, they couldn't see me, how I really looked. Your pixel you can create. You can dress it up or down, make it male or female. But it wasn't just about the appearance. You could make it do whatever you want, like fire me or would go to a fish in a desert. And if someone was ever annoying you, just switch worlds. You'll probably never see them again. What I really do love about RuneScape is the diversity of everybody you get to meet. Some older, around 20 or 30, some younger, some experts who know what to do, and some noobs. They all have their own things going on and problems to share if they feel like you can be trusted. And I've been very lucky to know some of these people. They've become my friends. One almost like a brother to me. And he lives all the way down at Somerset. And I can tell him whatever I want, really. And it's not just about the appearance. It's about what you say, what you type in, what you say because you get to type it out and they can't see you. Thank you. Um, okay guys, does anybody have any questions for Jess about that? It's called RuneScape. RuneScape, yeah. yeah can you, can you, I know the name, but I don't know. It's it's very warriory, warriory, and it's just about loads of fighting as well. But it's not that fighting. That's <laughs> why it's more survival. That, it, it's more guiding than girl game, but I kind of just got really drawn into it. In, and it, I, it's been since I was eight years old. Yeah, and it's quite dangerous, I guess, but I still really enjoyed it. And I'd just go on every day for like two hours and talk to these people. And there were people from America and everything. And, She's like that, really mm. different. Can I ask a mm. question? Yeah. When you talk to these people from different parts, do you talk as yourself mm. or as the person you created? I talk as myself and I always have. I've never tried to be mm. someone else. I might have had to start for a bit, but then I just mm. get really close to them and I talk to them about anything. And they talk to me about things as well. And they still know some of them. Have you ever heard of a game called Small Worlds? No. It's, sound, it's, it's, it's sort awesome. of exactly the same. Like you meet people and talk to them. But it's like, as you were saying, if someone's bugging you, you can just like switch. Totally switch. Yeah. 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 I'm not I think, I know this book, but how long did you play? How old you were? I played from 8 to 13, five years. Yeah, because I had, you know, GCSEs coming up and my friends kind of quit it, but I still talk to some of them and I occasionally go on. Yeah. Do you see it as a, as a sociable game or, or a sociable way to pass your time or do you see it as antisocial? I see it as social rather than antisocial because it's just well, I mainly went on this chat to people and would say, talk about everything really, like really different stuff. And it was just really interesting to me. Do you find that that's the only way that you can be the true you? Not anymore. Good. I did for a long, long time because I didn't, people wasn't really nice to me and it was really hard fitting in because I've been to school like five times. So I just go on that and stay friends with people for a really long time. So did it help you be, the, be you? Yeah, yeah, it definitely did. <coughs> the, people, the people who are really close to me knew, knows about it, 
and how RuneScape just was a big part of my life. And now it's changed, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of glad I went on there and found out more about people mm -hmm. and the world. Yeah. So what advice would you give to somebody that you knew as like the confidence as you did then if these games didn't mm -hmm. exist? I would tell them to talk to somebody if they wasn't really confident, like, because there's no game, if the games weren't existing, mm -hmm. you could see it online, mm -hmm. I guess you just have to talk to someone you know, who you mm -hmm. trust, and if you can't, then there are ways to escape, and I know that's bad, but it just, you kind of gradually build it up, and you can start with music, and you can talk about your music, and throw mm -hmm. someone else, yeah. So these games that you play, what would you add that's not all there? That well, you know, at the time, would you add what, would you, what would, you know, the need, your need at that time, did the games fulfil all your needs, or is there something yes. that you would now add? Um, wasn't they, there? they did fulfil my needs because I was just growing up, so I didn't know anything about other people when I wasn't very good. So I just go on and I'd be really happy. If you could design something now for people, for you back then, or for people like you mm. now. Would you make some help? What would it look like? Uh, it would yeah. probably look like that. And then, lately, RuneScape has changed a lot. The layout and the people. Um, it, it's less known now. Like People are calming down about it. But I would probably, I always wanted to work there when I was little and help them out and like try and play it and try and up, give updates and mm. work there, really, because it was a really cool thing to do. Do you still want to? No, it's, I still, I wouldn't mind doing it, I would do it, but I still have other stuff I want to do now, like, we just grow up, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so, I guess that sort of opens up a whole new realm for us, really, about how we sort of deal with our own reality, and what we do to create a reality that we would prefer. Um, so, thinking about that, really, is taking us back to our second tribal task. Um, and I basically just want you to all sort of think of a reality that you would like, be it a game, be it to live in your favourite country, anything that you can think of. Like I said before, the Alice in Wonderland thing, if you're a book person, you can make a reality in a book and live in books. Um, whatever appeals to you. Um, and we only have one dictaphone in the room now, at the moment. Um, so do you have a dictaphone as well? Okay. Yeah, um, oh, do you have a dictaphone? Oh, yeah, I've got just okay. Okay. Yeah, if you can, did it work better that way? Yeah, it was better. Okay, so instead of just jumping straight into the dictaphone, does everybody have a rough idea of what they would like to say about their reality? Yeah. Or do you, do you want to talk about that for a moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. We arrived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just I don't want to throw you in at the deep end or anything. <laughs> Go you on. Um, so, are we okay to pass you all dictaphone around? Sure. Is that okay? So, we didn't similar to last time, I'm a bit confused about what the difference is between the other instruments. Yeah, the, the, it's, it's, it's a very similar idea, except for this is complete, it's more sort of fantasy okay. than, than right. before. before. Or, I mean, what do you So, it's not a different kind of reality. Yeah, so if you could if, if you could make up a reality within a game, yeah. like a virtual reality, yeah, yeah, yeah. how you would you know, if you were a flame throwing Spider Man, you know, totally yeah, you. This is gonna be simple. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You've got your idea already, that's good. <laughs> My reality would be all the K pop fans in South Korea and the K pop idols. Um, I would actually really like, and I have been thinking about this for a really long time, to be the characters in RuneScape because they just, it's really cool and it's just, everyone's the same height. So you don't get people saying, oh, you're a midget. Yeah. I don't really play computer games, I've not played computer games for years, so I'm finding it hard to put myself into that, but my reality would be living on a campsite with all my friends. Mm. I think I would maybe start over, be 30 years mm. younger and mm. make some other choices. Mm. 
I would be sitting on my Xbox and mm. just playing all day. <laughs> Xbox is awesome before like to connect mm. on the on the I would create a game where I create my ideal world. Yeah. I was um, quite interested in the lucid dreaming, so I, I'd quite like to control my lucidity, I guess. <laughs> <coughs> and my ideal brown would be a giant maze full of rooms, large and small, different doors and different puzzles and riddles to solve, where people can go on their own solitary journeys to advance or continue moving on, work in groups to solve puzzles, um, where nothing is quite what it seems, but it's certainly permeated by colour, scent, trickery, beneficial surprise, kindness, and an ever uh, permeating sense of excitement. I've always been obsessed with being able to just leap into another world. I think that's the really thing that took you to other places when you were little. And I would love to be able to do that now, where you just cut a hole in a wall and you're in another world. Um, I think my reality would be you being able to stop the world for a little bit and then teleport yourself to somewhere like the yeah. Caribbean or somewhere like that or, or even your own dreams like some of have really realistic dreams and I'd quite like to sort of be able to jump in there and then you come back into the world and nothing's really changed and you can just carry on with life. Oh yeah. Three minutes. Are we on three minutes? Yeah, just three minutes. Okay, lovely. Okay, guys. So, does anybody have any questions about that? I'm aware it opens up sort of a different emotion, I guess. Why would you be on your Xbox all day? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the weekends, I I usually do that. Mm. Do, do you talk to people on the Xbox then? Not recently, because. Xbox Live has had some changes and me my mum no me and my mum know the password but it's saying that we don't know the password. So we've got to wait ten to ten to twelve days till my mum gets emailed and that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what that's the weird fancy. American girl on the phone says. <laughs> <laughs> so for some reason they wanted to talk to me. That but do you, you used to talk oh. to people, strangers, on um, Stranger Danger? <laughs> Did you? On Xbox Live? On Xbox Live, yeah. Yeah, Stranger Danger. But like, I just. You're, you're to... nine, you're nine. Yeah, but well, I used to play on this game. <coughs> I used to play on this game. I used to play on this And I used I to drive around. Not and not that's 18! <laughs> basically, that's not the easiest you're supposed to be playing All I said into the microphone was. Does anyone want to be on my team? Someone just shot me with a giant can. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to have to cut this a little bit short. Thank you for the last one out again. Um,